here is the formula for building muscle while intermittent fasting. Okay, it sounds like a catch-22. It sounds like it's not even possible. How can you possibly build muscle when you're intermittent fasting? Well, it comes down to very strategic timing and understanding different mechanisms within your body. It's a lot more than just calories in versus calories out. And I'll come right out and say it, calories in versus calories out matter. But it's so hard for us to determine when those calories actually matter. Right now, I'm not eating anything. Does that mean that I'm technically in a caloric deficit right now? If I was eating a Rice Krispie treat right now, would I technically be in a caloric surplus at this very moment in time? See, it all depends on when we eat. So we'll get into more of that later. But in the meantime, you are tuned in to the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos peppered in throughout the week as well. You can make sure you hit that little bell button to turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live or post a new video. All right, so what I'm gonna do with this video is I'm gonna give you breakdowns of each and everything that you should consider when it comes down to laying out your intermittent fasting muscle building plan. Okay, it's gonna be broken down into different proven points, and then by the end of this video, you'll have a collective knowledge of what you can put into actual application to get the most out of your intermittent fasting muscle building cycles. All right, so the first thing you wanna talk about is always train fasted. Okay, there are some circumstances in which you would not, but I want you to train in your fasted state. This is important, and we'll talk more about how you can orient the timing in just a bit, and I want you to stick with me through the whole video, but the reason I want you to train in a fasted state is because of the catecholamines. Okay, when you are fasting, your body's under stress, which means you're producing adrenaline, you're producing epinephrine. This sounds like a bad thing because it's fight or flight, but believe it or not, this is actually somewhat muscle sparing. What happens is when you trigger that catecholamine response, like you do when you're fasting or you do when you're working out, you're triggering your body to activate hormone sensitive lipase and start burning fats for fuel. This burning of fat for fuel actually preserves some muscle. Okay, it makes it so that your body doesn't start breaking that down. It triggers the release of fatty acids to be used instead. So no matter what, unless you're trying to gain fat while building muscle, unless you're, that's your specific goal, you should still train in a fasted state. It's gonna keep you leaner and it's gonna preserve some muscle. But another cool thing happens. Catecholamines actually trigger a specific contraction of our blood vessels, which sounds bad at first. You're probably thinking, wait a minute, I wanna take all these like supplements to increase blood flow and all this. How come you wanna contract your blood vessels? Well, it's not quite that simple. When we're fasting and this catecholamines release, the blood vessels constrict, but blood is gonna be isolated more so to the larger muscles. This is going to force them to have more blood, which is gonna actually increase force output. When we increase force output, we increase strength. With strength comes mass alongside proper nutrition, of course. So we definitely want that. You're actually gonna get stronger with your larger muscle groups, like your quads, your glutes, your chest, your back, things like that. You might feel a little bit weaker in your auxiliary muscle groups, but it's not that big of a deal. The next thing that we have to talk about is mTOR. mTOR stands for mammalian target of rapamycin. And in the gist of it, mTOR is just the anabolic signaling. What we wanna do is we wanna turn on mTOR at specific points in time. When mTOR is elevated, we're building muscle. We're activating protein synthesis. It may sound like you want mTOR on all the time, but you don't, okay? You only want mTOR on at specific times. And that's why we're gonna talk about when to time it and when to get those spikes. The rest of the time, you want your body burning fat. You want your body utilizing cells and actually using its own energy for energy. So mTOR works closely with insulin, okay? So when we spike our insulin, we have high levels of mTOR. So high levels of insulin means higher levels of mTOR, which means higher levels of muscle building. Obviously, we don't want mTOR to be elevated all the time. So here's the interesting thing. When you are fasting, during your fast, your insulin levels are super low. You're not building muscle during your fast. I can almost guarantee that, okay? While you're fasting, you're just maintaining. You're preserving muscle maybe, but you're not building it. So what happens is, Throughout the day, your insulin sensitivity builds, meaning you're getting more and more sensitive to insulin when you do finally spike it. So when you break your fast, you're spiking your insulin big time. So what I mean by this is you're gonna wanna make sure that your workout is towards the end of your fasting period. So if you allocate your workout to the end of your fasting period, you get to capitalize on an insulin spike in two ways. You're insulin sensitive after a workout but then you're also insulin sensitive at the end of a fast. So you're double insulin sensitive, which means that when you do consume your protein, you do consume food, you're going to get a big spike in insulin, which means you're going to get a bigger spike in mTOR, which means you're gonna get more protein synthesis at that very 
minute. And that's exactly what we want, specific timing. So that means when we spike our insulin with a small amount of carbohydrates or a small amount of protein, or a good amount of protein, I should say, you get the insulin spike, which means the cells become more receptive to the nutrients that are coming in. Now, of course, that's a benefit because we get more nutrient absorption at that point in time. But of course, we get the activation of mTOR. We get the actual anabolic metabolic signaling that tells your body to flip the switch and start building muscle. And this has been proven in a study that was published in the journal Nutrients. They found that an increase in insulin correlated with an increase in mammalian target of rapamycin. So specifically in metabolic tissues too. So we're talking like skeletal muscle and stuff like that. Okay, leads me into the next thing. The foods that you should eat. What specific foods should you use to break your fast? Well, it's pretty simple to be honest. We wanna focus on foods that are gonna increase mTOR, which are pretty basic to be honest. Protein, lean protein, specifically leucine, the amino acid leucine, or essential amino acids, those are going to spike your overall mTOR levels. That's what we want, okay? We want a spike in insulin, we want a spike in mTOR, we want a spike in mTOR from insulin, but we also want a spike in mTOR from other pathways too. We wanna to do everything we can to get this big spike in mTOR at one specific time, because we don't wanna elevate it the rest of the time. If it's elevated the rest of the time, you're building fat, you're growing tumors, you're doing all kinds of stuff. We wanna elevate it at specific periods of time. There's actually a study that was published in the Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercise that found that specifically taking EAAs, that's the essential amino acids, they end up spiking insulin and mTOR in a very specific way. So exactly what we need. You don't need to go crazy on your protein intake, but you want to get your lean protein in. Now, that's not really anything to write home about. You guys probably know that. But of course, getting lean, clean protein sources is imperative. And for those of you that know my channel, you know that I'm a huge fan of ButcherBox. The reason I'm a fan of ButcherBox is because they actually use organic pasture-raised and pasture-finished meats. Okay, this means you're not having a bunch of garbage in it. You're not having grain-fed garbage. You're having good quality stuff that is naturally leaner. Okay, even the cuts of beef are going to be leaner because they don't have all the extra fat that's coming in from soy and grain-fed meat. Okay, normally when a cow is eating grain, it's gonna have an excess amount of omega-6 fats that we don't want. The wrong time to be taking those in. You don't want those in after a workout. You want your meat lean and clean. And ButcherBox actually makes it possible to literally get meat cheaper than what you would get at the grocery store delivered right to your doorstep. So make sure you check them out. There's a special discount for my fans down in the description below. Huge thank you to them for making this channel possible and making it so that I can produce this content. But honestly, more importantly, big thank you to them for making my grocery bill a heck of a lot cheaper. So make sure you check them out. All right, the next thing that you want to be paying attention to is actually adding a small amount of omega-3s. Okay, here's the thing. This is very important. When you spike your insulin, you don't want to have a big increase in fat too, okay? Here's why. Insulin spike opens up the cell doorway. So that's great for carbs and protein because it gets shuttled in, but not the best thing for fats, right? Because we don't want to allow fats to get super absorbed at that point in time because they'll go to storage. So normally I would say keep your fats super lean. Keep them out of the equation. Keep them super small. Keep them out of the equation entirely for the most part. But not in this particular case. I recommend that you have a small amount, just a couple of grams of high quality omega-3s. And you can get that through good quality lean protein sources, again, like from ButcherBox. So here's the thing. Omega-3s increase protein synthesis quite dramatically. There's a study that was published in the journal Clinical Science that found that supplementing with a small amount of omega-3s ended up increasing protein synthesis by 50% through the P70S6K pathway. Okay, what that means is that by having omega-3s in the equation, the metabolic switch to build muscle was turned on even more. However, it was only turned on in the presence of amino acids too. So a small amount of omega-3s, along with a good amount of lean protein, equaled a 50% increase in the protein synthesis process, meaning more protein was actually used for building muscle. Okay, combine that with the insulin spikes of allocating the workout towards the end of your fast, and we're in really good shape here. This is exactly the kind of thing we want. Okay, so now let's start talking a little bit more about carbohydrates. Some of you watching this video might watch my videos because I talk a lot about keto. Some of you might watch my videos because I talk about general health or fasting. The fact is, is when you are fasting for muscle growth, there are some big advantages to having some carbs in the equation. But again, we do it with very strategic timing. And even if you're following a ketogenic diet, if you follow the protocol that I'm about to explain, you will be back in ketosis within an hour or two. So you can follow this and still be all fine and dandy. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna combine salt, glucose, and fructose along with your lean protein and your omega-3 post-workout when you break your fast. 
Here's what's crazy cool. So we have different shuttle buses that take carbohydrates to places in our body. Okay? Glucose requires a specific kind of transport molecule. It's called S-glut-1. Okay? So I want you to envision this. Your digestive system is like a bus station and you consume glucose. Let's just say white rice to be simple, okay? So you consume white rice. It sits in your gut, it breaks down into glucose, and each glucose molecule gets on a bus. They start getting on a bus. The problem is you only have a few buses that can carry glucose. So a lot of it ends up sitting in your gut and not getting carried. So it ends up not getting utilized, or it just sits there raising your blood sugar and doesn't actually get to tissues because there's simply not enough buses to take it. But here's what's cool. If you combine a small amount of fructose into the equation, fructose takes a different bus. Where glucose takes S-glut-1, fructose takes GLUT-5. Okay, so that means that you can almost double the absorption of the carbohydrates, meaning less blood sugar spike and more just proper quick spike utilization of that glucose and fructose to therefore spike insulin, to therefore spike mTOR, to therefore spike muscle building abruptly and directly when you need it to. Fructose can go directly to the liver and can go directly into utilization, but glucose actually requires sodium to be properly absorbed. It's called a sodium-gated channel, okay, S-glut-1, so it's sodium-dependent glucose transporter. So the way that you get around this is you have a little bit of salt, a little bit of high-quality salt, a little bit of fructose and a little bit of glucose, and you can more than double the absorption. Okay, so it used to look like this. Glucose, you could absorb about one gram of carb per minute. If you combine glucose, fructose, and sodium, you can absorb 2.4 grams of carbs per minute. So that means your body can take it up a lot faster, which means, again, quicker insulin spike, more abrupt change, which is exactly what we want. So I recommend 15 grams of carbs coming from fructose, like orange or something like that, something simple, simple fructose, and about 30 to 40 grams of carbs coming from glucose. So this could be uh, dextrose if you wanted to go that route. It could be a starch. It could be like white rice, something like that, something that's going to absorb quick, okay? And it'll come back fast, okay? If you're in keto, you're going to bounce out of keto for a minute, but you'll come back. Okay, now here's another interesting thing. This is another reason why we need to be training in a fasted state. Okay, and this all has to do with mitochondrial density. So the mitochondria is where we create energy. Okay, it's where ATP lives and does its job. ATP is what actually produces energy. So we go through a process of taking ATP, cleaving off a phosphate molecule, leaves us with ADP. Long story short, basically ATP is what gives us energy. And mitochondria is where that energy is actually produced and housed and used. So when we work out, it used to be thought that we would have an elevation in mTOR the moment we lift a weight. So remember mTOR, the anabolic signaling pathway I've been rambling on about for minutes and minutes and minutes? Well, we used to think that the moment we start lifting weights, mTOR is turned on. Protein synthesis is on. And it's kind of the truth. But mTOR is only turned on while we're working out if we actually had food in the system. So you might be thinking right now, okay, Thomas is going to tell me to eat something while I'm working out or eat right before I'm working out. No, not at all. See, I don't care about you elevating mTOR during your workout. I don't expect you to be drinking a milkshake or eating a rice cake during your workout. That's just weird and laborious. We don't have to do that. Okay, I want you to keep that mTOR spike at the end of the workout. So what they've found now, researchers are finding that when the body is using its own stored fuel substrates while you're exercising, mTOR is actually suppressed. It all has to do with something known as AMPK. Okay, AMPK is sort of a reverse fuel gauge for your body. When you have high levels of AMPK, it means that your body's actual energy that it would normally have from food is depleted. So it has to start tapping into fat. So it's basically just a reverse fuel gauge. It basically tells your brain, hey, this guy's out of food, so just so you know, we're starting to tap into his body fat. Just want to let you know, brain. Okay, so that's what AMPK does. When AMPK is elevated, it turns off mTOR. But it also does something interesting. It increases the mitochondrial density. So it increases the power of the mitochondria, therefore increasing the mitochondrial capacity to hold more ATP. What does this mean? It means that over time, you have to be a little bit patient, you're going to get stronger by training in a fasted state, simply because your body is going to get better at housing energy. It's going to build a bigger factory. That mitochondria is going to become more dense, it's going to hold more ATP, it's going to allow more ATP coupling, more ATP synthesis, you're going to get stronger. So the short answer is this. mTOR elevates in a fed state when you're working out, 
but AMPK elevates in a fasted state when you're working out. AMPK is the long game. It's gonna get you more muscle density, it's gonna get you more muscle mass over the long haul, muscle that you'll keep. Eating while working out or eating before working out might get you a little bit more mass in the short term, but you're not gonna be as lean and you're not gonna be as effective. Two more quick things you need to know before you have an entire repository of information for intermittent fasting and building muscle. The next is have some MCT oil shortly before bed. Okay, why do I say this? Because if you went over on your calories a little bit, just a little bit of MCT oil actually increases your resting energy by 5%. So what that means is that your overall metabolism will increase simply because of the absorption of MCT oil is so crazy fast. It shocks the body. It actually triggers your metabolism to increase. So I say do this before bed because it gets you a little bit of a thermic effect, a little bit of a metabolic boost. So you just had a lot of calories. It's a quick way to turn off mTOR before you go to bed and trigger that catecholamine response that we want. That's gonna allow you to keep burning fat so you wake up rested, recharged, and a fat burning machine the next day. This last one is very important, okay? And it's a paradigm shift. And it's just me encouraging you to look at things a different way. Nothing says that you need to fast until the evening time. You can shift your fasting period. So for example, if you like to work out in the morning and you're still trying to build muscle, you might be wondering, well, I work out in the morning, so I'm supposed to fast the rest of my day and then not eat until evening? Well, that's one way of doing it, but no, why don't you fast breakfast to breakfast or lunch to breakfast? You can still fast 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 hours, but just make it so that you're breaking your fast at the end of whenever your workout is. So here's the benefit to working out in the morning and breaking your fast after your workout in the morning when you're trying to build muscle. There's an additional thing that you could apply that you wouldn't be able to apply otherwise, and that is actually adding caffeine into the mix post-workout. The Journal of Applied Physiology published a study that found that by consuming a small amount of caffeine along with the post-workout meal, it increased glycogen uptake. It increased the carbohydrates that went into the muscle significantly. At four hours post-workout, muscle glycogen uptake had increased 66% compared to those that didn't have the caffeine. So a little bit of caffeine will make it so the muscles take up more carbs. You don't want to do this in the evening time because you'll never sleep. But if you train in the morning, you could do this. So you could just shift your eating window. So make it so that you eat your lunch at like noon, and then the next day you work out and you break your fast with breakfast right after your workout in the morning. Problem solved. It's something that people tend to overlook. They always think that they need to eat from evening to evening or set it up like that. So in short, this is what it looks like. Work out in a fasted state and work out hard. Then you're gonna break your fast with lean protein, preferably from ButcherBox where it's controlled. Okay, lean controlled carbs. Okay, so you're gonna be like 30 to 40 grams of starch or nice glucose in a clean fashion. 15 to 20 grams of fructose, like from an orange maybe a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of high quality salt, maybe a little bit of caffeine if that's what you're doing, and a small amount of omega-3, anywhere from two to four grams of high quality omega-3. And then of course, keep your calories adequate, keep your calories in abundance. But again, don't focus as much on that. Focus on fueling yourself, getting the proper nutrition, and activating mTOR. As always, make sure you keep it locked in here on my channel. Make sure you check out ButcherBox down in the description for giving everyone such an awesome discount. I'll see you guys soon.